ex-Jehovah's Witness kills seven in church shooting. On March 9th, a gunman in Hamburg, Germany, stormed and fired bullets inside a Kingdom Hall building used by the Jehovah's Witnesses, killing seven and injuring many others before taking his own life. Among the wounded was a woman who was 28 weeks pregnant and lost the baby due to the injury. Reports from the Associated Press and The Guardian identified the suspect as 35-year-old German na man named Philip F. He was a former member of the Jehovah's Witnesses. Philip reportedly left the denomination, quote, voluntarily, but apparently not on good terms, 18 months ago. German police claimed that Philip F. might have been psychologically unfit to own a gun and showed anger towards the congregation. Olaf Scholz, Germany's chancellor and former mayor of Hamburg, uh, expressed his shock and sent condolences to the families of the victims, describing the act as a, quote, brutal act of violence. So this is really important. This got a lot of coverage within the past week or since the shooting, because in, in Europe, um, uh, they have way more gun control than we do here in America. Um, but in the context of Europe, Germany has more gun liberties than other countries so you see a little bit more of this kind of activity but it's still way more rare than it is in the united states um and i i thought this was really interesting because the this is this is what makes it difficult to talk about the jehovah's witnesses are a cult they are a destructive cult that uses very deeply harmful psychological tactics upon its members tactics of control and tactics of psychological um and social ostracization and shunning um and so i think it's interesting to consider that dynamic but it's also difficult to talk about because then it sounds like you're blaming the victims if you're talking about the abusive practices of this group, but then you don't want to be like pointing to these seven people and the many others that were injured and saying they're to blame. Do you understand what I'm saying here? What What do you think yes, about yes, this contention? We had the same problem with Fallen Dafa, which is a very, very dangerous cult. And at the same time is very much abused and mistreated and uh, tortured by the Chinese government. So it's a uh, but it's also a very dangerous and racist cult. So, so I think people just have to learn that these things can be happening, um, can be true at the same time. And one doesn't, one doesn't deny the other one. One doesn't negate the other one. So I think it's more, um, I mean, we could try our best to explain to people that we're not blaming the victim, but I think it's up to the audience to be able to understand that these things don't contradict each other. But... I mean, maybe it's not a good time to mention how um, destructive this cult is when they have victims mm -hmm. like this. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should maybe we should leave that to other times. I don't know. What do you guys think? Should we let us know in the comments after? Yeah, if I think that's a really if, good question. Yeah. Because I I think okay it, without I think it is interesting to consider if the overarching systematic behaviors of a group may have impacted an individual to act out now that's not to blame any random individual who was harmed or congregation for those actions right because this is something that's systematic throughout the organization it's a culture right so you're saying because but, their but, harmful practices had had a role in this it's hard for us not to mention it at all we're speculating that it had a role in this. Right. It, let's be clear. Right. It is speculation. Yes. So, but like it's, but, but it is part, like if it was any other news, it, uh, you would discuss this as part of the options. One I, would, of the I would also right? consider it if it was a different group. Yeah. So it's hard for us not to mention that. Because it is one of mm -hmm. the possibilities. I think I think we are doing fine. We could just be like, this is one of the possibilities. And hey, guys, don't blame the victim. I think that's as a content creator. What else can you do? Like, uh, like, yeah, we're not. This is obviously horrible. I yeah. Condone it. But I'm what's interesting? I don't in, think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sorry for cutting you off. Mm -hmm. 
what makes this interesting is that this man had published, he had self-published a book on Amazon. And in this book on Amazon, he talks about basically how he can almost as if he's like a prophet himself. He has like, he had a website where he offered to, for the fee of like a hundred, no, excuse me, 250,000 euros. Like he will somehow give people the path to like wealth and prosperity through, I don't know, divination or something. So those beliefs that he had were, we can't really make any judgments about what his mental state were after the fact, right? Because we don't know like what was the context that he wrote this or who he wrote it for. But very bizarre beliefs, I'll just say that. Bizarre beliefs to the point that he could not be considered a Jehovah's Witness. Definitely not. Not in line with their beliefs or basically a Christian in general. So, and he had previously had someone send in an anonymous tip concerned about his mental health and asking the police to go consider taking away his gun license and his guns. He legally owned the weapons in which he used to do this attack. And they went and did an assessment and said that he was fine. And then this happened. So there's clearly a lot more behind the scenes than what's clearly out in the news right now. Hmm. Well, somebody's going to get punished for during, for that assessment, I guess. Uh, get my best-selling book, Why There Is No God, for free. Click on the link for it in the description.